Welcome back and nature going smart. We have already touched down the topic of hemp sprouts with a short article titled 10 reasons for eating hemp sprouts. It's an old article dated June 2014, which I wrote few minutes after the illuminating discourse of Professor Giovanni Appendino at the plenary seminar of the annual ICRS Symposium. Many of you have asked to provide a more in-depth insight, and I agree that the topic is really important, that's why I'm teaching about it in a continuing medical education course here in my own country, but talking about hemp sprouts means talking about daily diet and prevention, so it should be a knowledge accessible and understandable to all, not just to the medical professionals. That's why I decided to make this video on 10 facts on hemp sprouts. Enjoy! With a complete source of all essential amino and fatty acids, hemp seed is a complete nutritional source. Well over 80% of its total fat content is composed of polyunsaturated fatty acids like uh, omega-3s, like alpha-linoleic acid, and omega-6, like linoleic acids. Actually, hemp seeds are amongst the only few edible seeds containing significant amounts of GLA, gamma-linoleic acids, and ZA, steradonic acids. These other two polyunsaturated fatty acids are very important because they decrease the formation of inflammatory prostanoids from arachidonic acids, meaning basically that hemp seeds, and so hemp seed oil, has a unique property of increasing the concentration of anti-inflammatory omega-3s and at the same time decreasing the production of pro-inflammatory mediators. And you might be wondering, what's in the video about sprouts? Wait, 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 we are getting there. The thing is that sprouts are nothing else than seeds allowed to grow. And why should we grow seeds unless we're a farmer? Well... Sprouting inhibits phytic acids and neutralizes some of the enzyme inhibitors, helping to avoid bloating. Sprouting also generally diminishes some of the fat content and converts the more dense vegetable proteins into simpler amino acids, helping our bodies to assimilate easier their nutritional contents. Seeds are amongst plant-based foods like vegetables, not so alkaline. When we allow seeds to grow and to sprout, these become closer to the state of vegetables, becoming more alkaline, which we know it's an important quality of foods that help us maintain a balanced state free from inflammation. This is again true for any kind of sprouts. Vitamins like vitamin C increase after sprouting. And this is such an old knowledge that Chinese sailors used to carry mung beans when on long journeys at sea to sprout them in order to obtain sufficient amount of vitamin C and prevent scurvy. So what happens with hemp sprouts? Well, the anti-inflammatory gamma-linoleic acids or GLA, which we mentioned earlier, increases of 30% from seed to sprout. This is pretty straightforward. With sprouting, the plant does not produce any cannabinoids, meaning that there is no psychotropic effect, making it a safe product to use as a dietary item for any category of people, from children, elderly, pregnant women. In some hemp varieties, sprouting induces the formation of pernilated flavonoids, like canaflavins, cannabis pyrins, caniprins, which are present in the leaves and the flowers, but not in the seeds. Flavonoids are secondary metabolites of plants. Plants produce them in order to protect against oxidative stress, pathogens, and UV radiation. Cannabis produces about 20 flavonoids that we know of, some in common with other plants like capigenin, quercetin, 
Humphrey and others absolutely unique to the cannabis plant, like canaflavin. Actually, canaflavin, um, with canaflavin we mean a combination of two closely re related canaflavins, which is canaflavin A and canaflavin B. anti-inflammatory property of canaflavin was found already in 1985 and shown to be higher than that of aspirin. Canaflavin is equipotent to cannabinoids in inhibiting inflammatory prostaglandins and leukotrienes. Canaflavins are in fact the first flavonoids having direct inhibitory activity on the two crucial enzymes in the biosynthesis of these pro-inflammatory mediators. Such dual inhibition is considered a pharmacological strategy in order to intervene with inflammatory disorders and might be superior over single target in terms of increasing efficacy and lowering the side effects. Flavonoids have a long elimination life from our bodies, meaning that it is possible to achieve bioactive concentration in the plasma and tissues of canaflavin with a regular consumption, for example, with a daily diet of hemp sprouts. Although this hasn't been tested in more details yet, the scientists who study canaflavin suggest that the best intake for canaflavins is within their fatty omega-3 metrics, like when they're found in the sprouts, and could help increase the activity and the absorption of this anti-inflammatory. They suggest that 20 grams of daily hemp sprout consumption are probably sufficient for obtaining significant concentration of these anti-inflammatory molecules. Seeds that have been sterilized or gamma-radiated won't germinate. But what about the seeds that do germinate? Is every hemp sprout the same? And the short answer is no. A study compared different chemovars and found that amongst those analyzed, varieties like hemp ermo have the highest amount of canaflavin A, whilst other, like hemp variety finola and the THCA variety, meaning a drug type of cannabis, reported a 0% concentration of canaflavins. On the other hand, canaflavin C was recently reported on a high potency THCA cannabis plant. And although we're not sure what canaflavin C does yet, we understand that each variety of seed will generate different products. So we need to remember this. The best part of all is that in order to obtain all these amazing nutritional benefits, you don't really need much. Think about sprouting like imitating springtime. So make sure your hands and all surfaces are clean and sterile, and then keep your seeds in constant moisture with some kind of warmth. So obviously the, the cooler the temperature, the slower the germination rate, and then leave your seeds in the dark and peace for four to five days. Be very gentle when touching them, especially avoid touching their top root. It sounds way more complicated than it actually is. I believe that they're so easy and cost-effective to make that they could easily become part of meals of hospitals. So they could really make a difference in supporting the health of chronic patients and elderly, for example. I hope you enjoyed this insight on hemp sprouts. Of course, if you want to learn more, there are references down below or get in touch with us. We offer a donation-based consultation so that you decide how valuable is the information that we provide. Thank you and I will see you next Wednesday.